Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mangus, and I welcome you guys to part 2 of Let's Play Civilization V, a brave new world playing as Zuleman of the Ottomans Empire. Let us continue our journey. So, in the first episode, which was also the last episode, we uh, founded the city of Erdian. Uh, we managed to snatch ourselves the Grand Mesa, which is always a nice thing indeed. It's not the best wonder you could possibly get, but it's pretty darn close. Um, hammers and gold, and as well as the potential to get some added uh, benefits uh, via the World Congress is uh, always a bonus in my book. Uh, Alright, so we have a scout with uh, movement 2, and which we just stole from Jengish Khan, which I think is pretty kick-ass. I decided that I think I want to settle my next city on top of the weeds. Now, normally I'd probably settle one spot uh, north of the weeds, but the thing is... I really want a river between myself and Jengish Khan, because I'm pretty sure he's going to declare war on me. So I'm actually going to start working on a road immediately. Also, I think I need to get this archer out of here. Same with these guys. I'm actually going to fuck off a little bit. Too many barbarians. Um, so now I actually have two workers, and I'm going to start working on... I do need to work on calendar now that I'm done, or, or work on the marble when I'm done with the... Um, with masonry, I can actually start working on a road on top of the marble tile. That should actually help a little bit in connecting this uh, newfound city that I'm gonna build. I really want a road connected to it immediately. And the reason why I want that is because when Jengish Khan inevitably declare war on me, which he will do by the way, um, then I can uh, quickly ferry reinforcements over. I'm gonna work on a library for one turn, and once Istanbul grows to pop four, I'm gonna start on my second settler. Uh, Pop 4 is a good time to found your first city. Of course, I've already founded one, but I'm still gonna f build another settler uh, because I really want to snatch the city before Jengish Khan does. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes for the city states. Uh, Jengish Khan likes to conquer city states really early. His civilization bonuses allows him to do that. Uh, also, the Aztecs have actually founded a city really close to him, so I might actually convince the two of them to go to war uh, if I'm a little bit clever. Also, these spearmen should definitely come back. It's gonna take them 20 turns to do so. Oh, right, we can't build roads here. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> Alright, then. I guess it's gonna have to be some farms. Yeah, we can't build roads yet, but we're gonna get masonry in next turn, so that's gonna help. Um, Alright, so now I'm gonna start working on a settler. If I switch over to production focus, that's not really gonna change anything. But in 11 turns, we should be able to found our th uh, third city. And as I said, normally you don't want to found cities on top of uh, resources. That's usually a very bad thing. You want to build a farm here uh, to get the added benefits. So, like, for example, when you get a uh, civil service, you get plus one extra bonus from farms. Uh, however, as I said, I don't want to build on top of the cotton. It's a little bit too close to Maspan Congo, and I really want the sheep tile. If I can settle the city here, then I'll have a river between myself and Jengish Khan. And a river, as may, many of you may know, um, is a... Um, let me see, I'm just going to grab calendar here. A river gives attacking units a 20% penalty when they try to cross over it, which means that it's going to be very hard for it to take my cities with melee units. So yeah, uh, we're going to have to pick a Pantheon right here, and that's going to be a tough choice, actually. Um, I do think that Gods of Craftsmen would be pretty nice. Uh, extra hammers are always nice. I could certainly go for... Um, I could certainly go for um, Desert Folklore if it hasn't been taken yet. I'm gonna see, has Desert Folklore been taken yet? Uh, I think it has. I'm just gonna check very quickly. Yeah, Desert Folklore has been taken. That would have been a really good pick if I'd gotten it, but... Now, I'm looking at Goddess, Goddess of the Sea, and I, or God of the Sea, and I don't see that many fish tiles, so I don't think that's going to be worth it. Um, God of War is, can be good. Um, I have marble. I guess quarries? I do have a lot of quarries, but you, stone circles only give you plus two faith from quarries, which is not fantastic. I could certainly go with on one with the nature, which would give me four faith from the Grand Mesa. It's not a bad pantheon, all things considered, but... It will probably guarantee me a uh, religion, hmm. but I don't think in the end it's going to matter all that much. Um, gems and pearls, I don't have any of those. Messenger of the Gods is actually a pretty good pantheon if you can get uh, your cities connected quickly. Some extra science is always nice. Um, Goddess of Love is very good if you have happiness issues, and I might run into happiness issues at some points. Um, 
Hmm, this is a tricky one. I do usually have happiness issues, but I don't know. I think I really like Gods of Craftsman because that extra hammer really helps in the early game. You know, if we take it, we see that the we gain a we we gain a turn from the settler. So yeah, I'm gonna go for graft, uh, Gods of Craftsman because I just think it's a good pantheon. One hammer may not seem like much, but it does really add up over the course of a game. And I do like the fact that you get it instantly. I mean, normally you have a tree pop city by the time you get your first pantheon, so... Anyway, these scouts are actually kick-ass in terms of scouting. They really are. <laughs> I guess they had one job, and they did that job very well. Alright, so Ethiopia has founded a religion. I don't think I'll be able to get my own religion, to be quite honest. Uh, there are five religions that can yet be founded. There are, like, we have... I'm not sure, actually. I, I know Mon Monty is pretty darn aggressive. Oh! What is that? Is that... That is a Moroccan settler. Oh! Okay. Genghis Khan is getting surrounded. He's not going to be happy about that, I tell you. He is probably going to be pretty pissed knowing Genghis Khan. I, I really predict that Genghis Khan is going to declare war on Maspa Congo. The first city-states close to Genghis Khan nearly always gets declared war on. Uh, he, he prefers to do that rather than settle his cities. What's good about this is that if he does take Maspa Congo, I don't think I'll be able to prevent it, but if he does, I can liberate them and get myself a very quick ally. And when you liberate a city-state, they are usually your allies for the rest of the game, unless someone else comes and really makes an, a hard attempt to get, get them over on their side. And I do believe they are a mercantile? No, they're a militaristic city-state, and they know the secrets of the Turkio. Alright. That's kind of cool. I'm getting a militaristic city-state. It's going to be very nice. Uh, I could take a worker. Um, especially, yeah, it's a city-state quest, so... If that worker happens to be from the same city-state which delivered the quest, which it usually is... Uh, I'm gonna grab my... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna grab a granary here, because this city is not growing. So that is what I'm going to do. Yeah, this archer can stay here for the time being. But yeah, I'm gonna grab a granary here since the deer is not working, uh, get, getting any food. Uh, there's not a lot of food tiles, I need to send a villager over here and uh, connect some, or at least build a farm. But for the time being, I think I should focus on getting Coco up. All right, let's see what's over here. Ooh, uh, ah! Lake Victoria, one of the best wonders in the entire game. That wonder is insanely awesome. Six food. I think I got that when I played as uh, Bishmark. I do believe I did. I, I settled the city, one of the best cities I've ever seen. Settled it uh, right next to Lake Victoria, my second city. Uh, that city, I think, grew to be larger than Berlin. Like, six food on a single tile, like, with no, with absolutely no improvement needed, it's just criminally good. Alright, we have a uh, policy. Uh, should I go for landed elite or monarchy? Um, I think landed elites. Usually want to go for landed elite first. Alright, we can start improving that in one turn. I... It, oh, there's a city-state there that I haven't discovered yet. I bet they will give me a quest to destroy that barbarian encampment. I'm pretty sure they will. Alright, now I can gather up the cocoa, sell the cocoa, and everyone should have a jolly good time. I think I'm actually going to send this archer that I have here. Okay, first, let's see what's over here. Uh, now I can go improve on the cocoa. Oh my god, more barbarians. Um, I'm going to send this archer up here. I don't want that city to be defenseless. Alright, now I should really go for bronze working, so I can grab roads. Um, no, wait. Yeah, I need the wheel for that. I do need bronze working first, so I can grab spearmen. Not to mention nowhere iron is. That's going to make a little bit of difference in where I want to settle my cities. I do plan to go to war early, so having iron is actually going to be quite important. Alright, a Russian settler. Interesting. Uh, looks like I'm actually getting my ass kicked over here, so let's retreat. I'm going to try to make an eff effort to, to conquer this barbarian encampment. I think I could get myself an ally, because... As you can see, it's a city-state quest to destroy this barbarian encampment. I think it's Colombo? So if this worker is indeed from Colombo, then I could end up allying myself with Colombo. And that's a pretty good, good ally to have very early on. It's gonna pretty much solve all my happiness issues for the foreseeable future. 
Of course, Mercantile City State is not the best city you could get at this stage of the game. In fact, there are many city states that would be better, such as a maritime one. That would really kick ass, by the way. But I'm not gonna say no thank you to a Mercantile City State either. Okay, he wants an embassy, that's fine, I guess. I don't think it's gonna matter much, though. Once he's done taking Maspa Congo, he's either gonna go take Ten Teochikan or he's gonna declare war on me. Most likely he's gonna declare war on me because I think Monty has a lot of Jaguar Warriors. But hopefully they do something to piss each other off. Here's Moscow. I'm gonna go settle on top of the weed. I'm gonna put my city back to food focus to cause it to grow quicker. Uh, I'm gonna finish up the library and then I'm probably gonna go for a barracks. And then I'm gonna go for a Composite Bowman tech, because that's going to be quite important. Uh, getting Composite Bowman up early. I do think I want to go for Karakorum. Uh, that definitely sounds very nice. And I have met Zurich. I still want to go and meet that city-state down here. That would actually be quite nice. Oh, hello there, Jengish Khan. I hope you're not headed to my city. That would actually not be very nice at all. I think he's headed for Maspa Congo. Knowing Genghis Khan, he probably want to try and take the city. Or he's headed for me. But once I get my city up, I don't think you can take that with archers and warriors. That Those simply won't be strong enough. Especially considering he has to cross over and, and fight on a river. That is not going to go very well for him. Maspa Congo requests units. Yeah, of course they do. Because Genghis Khan... Oh, so Genghis Khan have already declared war on them. Uh, yeah, I think he has. I just missed it. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Jengish Khan is a little bit too strong for me at the moment. Those insane immortal bonuses gives him so much bonus to production. So he can churn out those early game units so much quicker than I can. Yeah, I think he's actually... Yeah, he is attacking Maspa Congo. And I don't think... Yeah, he'll, he'll be able to take Maspa Congo for sure. Um, uh, but hopefully I, I should be able to liberate that when I eventually go to war with him. That should be nice for me. Alright, so let's settle the city on top of the weed. It's gonna grow quickly, at least. Alright, will it... Okay, it returned to Ethiopia. Hmm. If I return it, I'm gonna get a huge modifier with Ethiopia. I think I will. I think I have a research agreement partner for the foreseeable future there. Okay, so now it's time to go for a barrack. Um, in one turn, so we can... I guess work on. We could put one one turns of production into a workboat. I do definitely believe this city needs walls. That goes without saying, pretty much. So once Maspa Congo falls, which it probably will do very soon, uh, Genghis Khan is going to set his set, 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 set sight on. Oh, he wants to declare war in Morocco. I actually don't want to join in on that war, but I'm going to see if I can bribe him to do it. He does have a lot of units, though, and I need these spearmen over at my city now. That's actually quite important. I think I'm going to have to switch my city over to production focus and get some units out. Alright, can we get here in... how long is that going to take you? 14 turns. Ouch. Hmm. Maybe my scouts can take down those archers. Uh, let's grab the wheel. We do need that road. That's actually kind of important. We're gonna go over to production focus. We're gonna get a barracks down. 11 turns is quite a lot, but we'll need those promotions. Need yeah, it. and I got declaration of friendship with Eth Ethiopia. Not really, really un unexpected there. Oh, hello, Gandhi. Nice to see you again. Two games with Gandhi in a row. So he's all the way up there. He could become a problem late game, actually. Oh, yeah, that city's gonna fall pretty rapidly, too, by the looks of it. This city needs to grow. <laughs> if we're gonna get walls in the foreseeable future, it needs to grow. Um, okay, so now we have the cocoa, and we need trapping to get the deer. But we could go grab the cotton. That's pretty nice. If I could work on this quarry as well, then the city could grow and we could get some uh, extra production towards these walls. Maybe he wants to trade a luxury for a luxury? I don't think that's a good deal for me. I have seven happiness already. I think I'm much more interested in getting... Um, mm, 
I must agree that now Catherine only gets six turn gold per turn. That's not good enough for me. All right, Maspa Congo fell. Not very unexpected. Most city states near Genghis Khan usually do very quickly. Um, the question is, how long do I get before he decides to declare war on me? Uh, it's, ooh. Oh, no. Oh, if I were one tile closer, I could have taken this encampment easily. Hmm. Yeah, that sucks. I guess I could go work on this quarry. I, I do feel, would feel a lot more comfortable with those walls up. Um... Nine defense strength is not a lot, especially not if he has catapults. Terracotta army. I'm glad Genghis Khan did not get that wonder. That could have been very problematic, actually. All right, let's go for the cotton. Yeah, I took his worker back. I could have got myself a, a, a religious ally there, and that's that actually sucks. All right, so working the quarry on the cotton should make Anarka gets its wall stop quicker. Which it really needs to do, because 71 turns is a little bit pathetic. Yeah, I could see if Genghis Khan is interested in declaring war on some people. Maybe Montezuma or Aham Ahmad al-Masur would actually be quite useful if he did that. Now we have the wheel. Let's just keep exploring. Alright, let's see. If he covets my lands, he doesn't actually, but he could be faking friendship. Uh, he'd do it for three gold per turn on luxury, which is way too much. Alright, I have to see if anyone actually wants to buy my shit. Uh, seven gold per turn? I can get flood gold from this guy. No, he doesn't. We don't have an embassy? What the hell? He doesn't want my resource for whatever reason. Uh, Monte doesn't have gold per turn. Catherine is like the... Oh, wait a minute. Catherine is getting 17 gold per turn now. I should be able to get 7 gold from her. There we go. So now my economy is looking a lot stronger. Alright, so what should we go for now? Probably construction. I would like trapping to get these stair camps uh, connected, but I really need uh, Composite Bowman if I'm going to have a chance against Genghis Khan. I'm going to need a lot of spearmen, a lot of Composite Bowmen, and probably some trebuchets or catapults. But uh, Maspa Congo will be a nice ally once I liberate them from the uh, tyrant's rule. And I love these scouts. Look how far they can see. It's absolutely ridiculous. All right, we're going to go for a library here. It's all good. Istanbul is going to grow in 12 turns. Not the fastest growing city I've ever seen, but it's going to become quite a good city, I, I do believe. I do wonder if I should work on the road from Istanbul to Adirn. It would it will be a, a easier for me to ferry reinforcements between the cities, for sure, but I'm actually not sure. Alright, so, did we meet Kazil? Oh, we still haven't met the city-state. I guess I should send a unit down and just say hello to them. There's really no reason not to, at this point. One more turn, three more turns. I really don't like these. Actually, I don't. I don't really want to move these archers away now, because Genghis Khan might very well decide to declare war on me within a tough couple of turns if he decides that Anarka would be an easy target. Certainly would not be surprised. And a war with Genghis Khan at this point would be well. At least he hasn't gotten his Keshiks yet. But he does have chariot archers, which is quite scary. I might buy myself an archer once the barracks finished. Ouch. That's a great general, isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to get someone to declare war on him right now, because I definitely think I'm his next target. I'd be a pretty big idiot not to realize it, the way he positions his units. I'm gonna talk to every single leader in the game, see if they want to declare war on him. Uh, if you wonder what that, what this sound is, it's just my lamp. I'm sorry. Alright. Montezuma is friendly towards me. Let's see if he wants to declare war on... Uh, I have to make this. Oh, Marbisir is playing Civilization. Um, oh, he'll do it for 5 gold per turn. Definitely. That is so worth it. I don't like paying 5 gold turn at this point. But it's either five, pay 5 gold per turn or have Genghis Khan crush my city. I am not ready to take him on yet. Um, this should cause all of his units to move away now. Now that they've declared war on each other. Very rarely have I seen an AI declare war on me the same turn as another AI declare war on me. Yeah, that's going to cause him to move his troops away. Montezuma has quite a bit of Jaguar Warriors, so he might actually be able to put a lot of pressure on him. 
Hopefully they should uh, expend a lot of their resources fighting each other. And I should have time to build up a suitable army of composite bowmen in the meantime. I can actually move my archers back now. I should really be working this tile. Because it's worth a lot... Seriously, it's only worth two production? Really? That's not a lot? Huh. I thought a quarry was worth two hammers, but I guess it's only worth one. Well, if I do that, the city's not going to grow. But I'm going to get my walls very quickly now. Maybe I should just do this instead then. Mm. I really want the city to grow though. I could let it grow to, to pop tree first, I suppose. Looks like we're in the jungle now, brother. Alright, I'm going to start working on roads. And uh, now I just, I need a spearman, first and foremost. I need composite bowman. Great light has, has been built in a faraway land. I wonder who built that. There's still a lot of civs I haven't met yet. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's still, there should be three more leaders. Because we're playing on a large map this time around, so there's ten civs total. And up to 20 city-states. Oh my god, that's a pretty kick-ass expand location right here. Right next to this mountain, you'd get cocoa, banana, spices, cattle. Yeah, if, you, if you expand directly south of the mountain, you could get all of these. If this city does not get taken, I wonder what's wrong with the AIs. Gandhi should take this city for sure. Because this would be such a huge city. It has river, it has mountain, it has jungle tiles. Jungle is one of the best places you could potentially start. Um, because of bananas and, of course, science gain. Like, a, a city with a university and a lot of jungle tiles gets so much science. It's absolutely insane. Ah, it's Venice. Okay. Uh, Venice. They're probably the worst civ in the entire game. Uh, since they really can't expand. They can only annex city-states, and that's not really good. Oh, Harold Bluetooth. A new photo. <laughs> Always nice to have Harold in the game. He's an aggressive fucker. Uh, but yeah, Venice usually does not pose much of a threat. Since they can't expand, they just they just never really become much of a threat at all. And it's really their big Achilles heel. They, they can't expand and thus they just, just fade away into obscurity most of the time. The concept behind Venice is pretty cool, but it just doesn't work out. Um, you know, a city-state, I, I, like, I call, I call them a city-state. A city that does not expand, but an extra city-state, you know. An extra city-state just isn't good. You'd rather want, like, if they could immediately ally themselves with the city-state instead, that would have been much better. Like, use a great merchant of Venice to automatically or permanently ally yourself with the city-state, that would have been a kick-ass. Like, you can never take the city-state away from them, because you want the city-state bonuses, and they lose that the moment they annex, which I think is very sad. Alright, the reason why I'm building this road manually is because route to mode usually can fuck up the tile a little bit, and I'm very specific in where I want my road. I want it over the hill tile, that's a very good thing, because then I can move across the hill tile unhindered. Um, and I want the road to go along the uh, coasts and not into the desert. There we go. Uh, so here's the Venice. Also, the great thing about starting next to Venice is that you're never really going to have any contested borders because Venice will never be able to steal any good expand locations away from you because they just stay where they are. Um, so they're very nice to have as your neighbors. And at the end, you could just conquer Venice and get a really good capital because they don't have any other cities. So there's very little they can do to stop your conquests. Um, so yeah, Venice is just a terrible this. civil together, and I don't understand why anyone would play them. You could, you could just turn on one city challenge if you want that. Alright, uh, what do we want here? Philosophy, maybe? Optics? Horseback riding? We will need a couple of catapults, actually. Um, there are plenty of things we need, actually. A lighthouse would be very nice as well, but I think maybe philosophy would be better. I'm actually going to go for mathematics. Get some catapults out would actually be really beneficial. Why aren't you moving? There we go. Yeah, getting some spearmen out, getting some composite bowmen out. I'll need a lot of composite bowmen. Like, a very large amount of composite bowmen. 
in order to challenge Genghis Khan. And I, I, I'll need to go to war with him before he gets his Keshix. If he gets his Keshix out, it's game over. Uh, it's like trying to fight Shaka once he got, got his MP out. It, it just won't work. It just won't work. It's as simple as that, really. Alright, can we upgrade these guys? Yes, we can. 80, 80. Why do they require maintenance, though? I should have Ogliarchy. They should be maintenance-free. I think that changed itself now. I think that the only reason why they cost income for a while is because I upgraded them, and they didn't re re register that they were actually inside a garrison. Because once they're inside there, they really should not um, cost anything, which is why I also think I'm going to place these guys, these spearmen, inside uh, a dirn, so that uh, it'll save me a couple of gold. Not a huge deal, but it works. All right, we have our Composite Bowman right here. I'm probably just going to keep spamming Composite Bowman. Uh, but I'm going to grab Monarchy, of course, because it's one of the best policies in the game. And in, uh, we're going to get our Tradition Finisher in 41 turns. That was actually a little bit pathetic. Um, I should probably send some units down to clear out this encampment, shouldn't I? I probably should. I could send this Composite Bowman down. Give it, give it some more. Always nice to get a few extra... Um, points of experience before the war. Well, that is exactly what I'm going to do. I also want to settle the city here eventually, because I'm going to get three sources of cocoa out of it, which is going to be pretty kick-ass. Um, too bad I can't settle on the river. Actually, I can. One, two, three, four. I could settle on the river. One, two, three. I could actually settle north of the cocoa if I really wanted to. Uh, I'd get a river. I'd get an observatory and a river. Hmm. It's actually quite tempting. We'll have to see. Okay, I hope my scout can go past unpunished, but there's a lot of barbarians here, so it actually doesn't seem that likely. Alright. We keep building a lot of compulsive bowmen. And Gandhi has completed Petra, what a fucking troll. Okay, he does have desert, so oh my god. Holy crap, that is actually pretty insane for him. Um Yeah, that is that is absolutely insane. He'll get so much. Oh, he has Desert Folklore as well. That's interesting. Alright, Adorn has its granary. And its library, apparently. So I'm gonna go for a barracks now. And start producing units there as well. Okay, I'm not going... I'm not getting past here. I've already admitted that. Actually, I, I could probably... I know there's an encampment here. I could go have some fun with that. Get some experience. Sounds like a good plan. But sure, maybe I should get a catapult or two. But catapults are usually very weak. So you don't always want them. Um, but taking a city state without siege weapons can be pretty tricky. Problem with catapults is that they die so easy, and the city states uh, cities usually just focus them and they die. All right, because they don't outrange cities. Shitties. It's my new typo. Shitties. All right. Uh, let us grab optics. So we. We probably should get a fishing boat out, but I have so much shit to build, and not enough time to build it all. Yeah, I'd love a declaration of friendship with Gandhi, that'd be pretty nice. wonder how the war between uh, Montezuma and Genghis Khan is going. Oh, Genghis Khan, I might actually get a declaration of friendship with him. I'm not sure if I'd want that, though. That would make Monty hate me, but I think a declaration of friendship is going to be inbound from Genghis Khan soon, because he likes, he likes me a lot now. That would be interesting to see. Oh, they've already took care of it. Okay, then. Guess I should have been faster. Alright, great. Um, so now we have the road. What should we go for now, really? Um, I guess I should go work on this farm. Because I am locking the tile, so... And this scout can just start to make his way elsewhere. Ethiopia and India are now friends. Interesting. He wants open Maybe borders. Nah. I see no reason to give him up. But this is actually... There's actually some good expansion locations over here as well. A lot of wheat, iron, cocoa, sheep, fish. I could make something happen with a city over here. Wheat on the desert is not exactly what you want most of the time. Considering desert tiles... Like, you'd want it on floodplains for sure, but... And on other tiles, they are a little bit meh. So to say. Okay, we could, could destroy us. We could destroy a lot of uh, archers from here, actually. 
But yeah, the plan is just to keep spamming Composite Bowman while we build up a suitable force to invade Genghis Khan. It's gonna be very hard to take down. I don't think the Chariot Archers are weak to Spearmen. I really don't. Or Chariots. Uh, oh, it is quite vulnerable to the Spearmen. Never mind, it does say in the description that it is. So he does have a lot of Chariot Archers. And yeah, I don't have uh, I don't have engineering, so I won't get the bonus from bridges. Uh, hanging gardens would be pretty kick-ass, but unless I get a great engineer, that's not going to happen. But I would love hanging gardens. It's quite weird that no one has sniped it yet, actually. Very weird. That is usually a wonder that goes immediately. Never mind. Oh my god, Gandhi's. Oh shit, Delhi is going to be the biggest city in the world with hanging gardens. Those are catapults. Hmm, is he still not fighting against Montezuma or is the war going that well? Huh, well, I got Composite Bowman, so I don't think Anarcha is going to fall. I really don't think so, but I guess we'll see. Alright, city connection established. Let's go through here. Let's actually send this composite bowman up here. I don't trust Strangish Khan on his troops movements. Let's get the copper going. And we're gonna get more composite bowmen. I think we'd need... I would feel comfortable with about 8 to 10 composite bowmen, probably. What, did they just teleport? <laughs> I guess that what ha that's what happens if a computer moves out of a line of sight. The troops just teleport away. That's a weird graphical glitch. Trespassing in Brussels. Fuck off, Brussels. I trespass where I want. Uh, I think giving these guys cover would be very beneficial, actually. Because they're going to withstand a lot of uh, fire at some rate. Uh, I think engineering, because then, um, then I'll get bridges over rivers, which is quite nice. Alright, let's grab the copper. Ardiran could, could be a really good city. I'm not quite working. Okay, thank god it wasn't Genghis Khan who got the Great Wall. I'm not working uh, the Great Mesa just yet, but I don't really need to. Once I start uh, pumping out soldiers, however, I possibly will, because that two hammer bonus is pretty nice. But for now, I'm going to let the city grow a little bit. I haven't gotten up any trade routes yet, but that's mostly because the guy I want to trade with is the guy I want to invade. So I'd only really be able to, to trade with city-states at this point, which is not that great. So I think I'd rather focus on other things. Um, can I not go through here? Alright, these guys can just auto-explore for the time being, I think. Don't really know what else I discover up there. But yeah, uh, getting barracks in Erdern, maybe even a barracks up, uh... Oh, he actually wants Declaration of Friendship. I actually won't... I won't sign a Declaration of Friendship with him, I don't want to. And that's a settler! And it's heading towards me. Well, looks like I'll be having more cities to conquer then. I really need to get out archers, and I really need to take him down before Keshiks comes into play, because at that point I will literally be screwed. Keshiks are impossible to kill, especially if they have cons back up backing them up. It's yeah, it's it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, they kite the living shit out of you, and I don't think that Spearman has bonus against Keshiks. I actually can't remember. I know Spearman does not. Okay, he's plans to expand over here, the fucker. Well, I know what city I'm killing first, then. Hmm, yeah. Hey, he might even just settle a city for me. And that's a golden age. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to end this patch. Join us in the next one, where we, where we will attempt to build even more Composite Bowmen to take on Genghis Khan. It's gonna be uh, quite a tough war to fight. I can't spend too long gearing up, that's for sure. If you did enjoy this episode, please consider leaving a like and a thumbs up. Uh, a like and a thumbs up. Wow. And a comment. It really does help. And as always, my name is Finn Manx, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.